Welcome back everyone. You're watching Off Grid with Brad and Kelly. I have some pretty big concerns that we're going to see in EMP in our near future. That's going to be something that completely makes it so that our vehicles don't work, our computers don't work, our uh, communication devices don't work. I also need something that is bulletproof around my property. I need this to hold my goods in. Now, a storage container, like a shipping container, provides a pretty decent amount of bulletproof capabilities. It also provides the ability for me to create a de facto Faraday cage. Now, what a Faraday cage is, it's a unit that's going to protect your electronics from any sort of radiological event from our sun. It's gonna make it so that if I have backups, because you know the adage, two is one, one is none. So you have to have backups of your walkie talkies, backups of maybe a generator, even if it's a small or a uh, thrift store one or a garage sale generator, backups of a communications device, backups of pretty much everything you think you're going to need if something bigger should happen that makes your electronics unusable. So Kelly and I did a lot of shopping recently and we found a 40 foot shipping container that they would deliver it's very used, and that's okay with me because as long as I can keep it buffered up off of the ground, that's gonna provide my first layer of electronics protection. The second layer comes with the cage that I build inside of the shipping container. Plus, now I have a place that's locked up. I can keep my goods inside of it, and it provides me with another bulletproof area of my property. Now, depending on where you're at in this crazy world and in this crazy country, that may or may not matter to you. For me, it matters a lot because I have not just out in the country where there's people hunting nearby, I do have bullets that whiz by way more often than I would like. I understand that we are enduring a very heated political climate inside of the United States of America right now. Now with this heated political climate, they wanna make it so that I can't have things like those chickens. A lot of areas around our country have already made it so you can't have your own chickens. We've talked to you about having off-grid poultry or off-grid birds that provide you egg-laying capabilities like quail. Those chickens, I've taken care of them for six months each chicken before they lay their first egg for me. I've got another really janky coop right over here that I'm using uh, to breed, or not breed, but bring up another group of chickens that are going to begin laying their egg production, their maximum, when these guys start going into their second year. So I'm cycling through like this, but if you didn't have either one of those things, maybe you live in an apartment, maybe you're just getting started, you can get quail. Now quail is going to provide you eggs at six weeks and those take six months. But because of these, this crazy political climate that we live inside here inside of the USA, I don't know what's going to happen. And so I'm trying to make every decision that I can, every purchase that I can has to matter more than the last one. I'm looking at a vehicle right now that's uh, you know really broken down. I need to put some work in that. But everything needs to reward my family for going off the grid or working to sustainability or protecting us from these crazy elements that are happening in our world. And that's what we're doing. You, know, you don't see it, but there's a fire break, right? You create a fire break by mowing down the trees, keeping the grass low. That fire break is no different from wildfires on your homestead or your off-grid property than what you do to protect yourself from the crazy world that's out there. We have sectarian persecution. We have uh, people who are attacking each other because of their ideologies or their belief system. And we have this thing that's happening where people believe that they're justified in hating their neighbors or hating their family members just because they think a little bit differently than they do. Now, I know that every bit of that shipping container being as bulletproof as it is. Don't get me wrong, you're not putting a 50 cal through it, uh, or you are putting a 50 cal through it. I'm not worried about the 50 cals. I'm worried about everything that some joker can hunt with, everything that they can push through the streets. That's the type of thing that really is on my mind. And again, it's not foolproof, right? It's just providing you an extra layer, an extra little fire break. 
Plus I'm gonna build a shed off the side of it, put the uh, tractor underneath it. If for some reason can't afford the tractor or can't afford the diesel or can't find the diesel, I'll be able to put other things and other implements like maybe some uh, beasts of burden underneath of it. So guys, I want you to come with me today as we bring that shipping container in. We've got to get the property a little bit prepared and ready for it. We're going to take some other looks at things that are happening around here. And you guys join us today as we do that. We have a backup propane tank. This propane tank is for these two tiny houses that we built and uh, use. So these tiny houses right here are sheds that we converted, uh, had them all done right, and they're really studio spaces, or if you have family that's running into trouble, they can come. Here's our younger chicks. They're about two to three months away from laying their first egg. So we're just hopeful and ready for that to happen. But guys, you, don't, you really have no, uh, you, you don't know when the bad things are gonna come. So we're just trying right now to do everything that we can so that if I can't do more, if I can't get as ready as I want to be, and that's to have, you know, a one acre garden or to have, uh, you know, all these cats under control or whatever it might be, then I'm going to at least have the uh, capacity to feed my family, keep my family warm, take care of what garden we do get implemented, take care of our uh, animals that are helping take care of us and just be there for our family. So let's go ahead and get ready now for the uh, shipping container to come. The guy said that he was maybe, uh, you know, an hour away. I've got a couple of things that I want to do to get ready first. You guys come with me. Now, whoever owned this land before us, I believe that they intended to put a mobile home at this location because there was already concrete strips dug into the ground. This is a perfect spot for me to be able to put that bulletproof, EMP-proof, safe area that I could even use for some other disaster-related things if the direction of our world went that way. So right here behind me, I have flattened ground, which you really need if you're gonna order shipping containers or if you're even gonna build a shipping container house, which is definitely something that we are considering. I'm gonna, when I do it, build it half into the ground you have to structure the sides of it because just the weight of the earth around it will try to cave it in, but only half into the ground. I want no weight on top except another shipping container, which I might put uh, kind of like diagonally across it just on enough support. Now, I'm not sure if that's what I wanna do yet or if I want to just build it into the ground so that I could use it as a makeshift storm shelter if I get caught on this side of the property. But over here, I want this to be an area, and it's not far, I can see our house from here. I want it to be a place that if I'm caught over here, I can get into a secure environment. You could even put some self-defense tools nearby if you wanted to, because let me tell you, my brother Mike, which I told you, I think him and his family are gonna start up a off-grid channel here very soon. My brother Mike had discussed how they are, uh, they're talking about using self-defense tools when they have to um, and having them where you need them because a self-defense tool that you have access to but don't have at that moment really does you no good. So if you're not walking around knowing that at any point in time, it doesn't matter if you have barbed wire. It doesn't matter if you have six foot gates. It doesn't matter what you've got. At any point in time, you have a vulnerability. So if you don't have those tools with you when something bad happens, including the ability to get behind something that is bulletproof, then you're really out of luck. They call it SOL, right? Shoot out of luck. So if you're shoot out of luck because you don't have the tools you need when you need them, that's where you really get in trouble. But right here behind me, I've got the ground that we're going to put the shipping container on. Uh, let's see, let me try to level it out for you guys a little. So this is where it's going to go right here. Now I'm hoping that these guys are on time because I don't like just either waiting at the gate or leave it. I'm not going to leave the gate open. That to me would be absolutely ridiculous. Even the cops that are out here say, hey, you're kind of on your own. When you go off grid, when you're away from society, when you're no longer partaking in the, their social order, whether that's because you don't believe in the morals that they keep in the city, or you just want a little bit of your own independence or sustainability, 
you're a little bit removed from the police coming to help you when you need them. And so you have to think about those things. Keep the gates locked, keep the doors locked, keep the windows locked at night, have security, have surveillance, and get ready. But I'm hoping that this guy, and I'm hoping he's gonna show up right about now. I don't know what I'll use and what I want. Things don't always go as planned, so we had to change the position that he's gonna drop the cargo container at. We are trying right hard, real hard right now to get it right so that it at least looks good and doesn't have it, give us any problems, but we just have to keep working. You guys know how it is. Anytime you're doing anything that is unusual, you just gotta go with how it goes. There you have it, folks. Bulletproof, EMP-proof to a certain degree. We still have a little bit that we need to do. The guy worked really hard to try to get its position where he wanted it to be, where we originally wanted it to be. We're a little bit, you know, we, we hoped it would be in a little bit different of a position, but what's a couple of degrees difference? If my main goal with this container is to make sure that I have somewhere to build my Faraday cage, make sure that I have somewhere to retreat to if there's any sort of ballistic issues, and to put all the things that we need in a budding off-grid homestead. Well, thank you guys for being on this journey with us. If you see anything, I don't know everything. If you see anything that you're like, you should have done this, should have cleared that, whatever, just please put it down in the comments, let me know. If you have a shipping container of your own that you're trying to use for storage, bulletproof background, uh, building a house in, the guy told me if you wanna build something out of these, get the one trip containers. Now he did say that they had just sold 12 to a guy who was patina in the outside, turning them into container houses, reselling them, and let's face it, they have to sell little houses now because no one can afford the big ones. You're on an off-grid journey with us here at Off Grid with Brad and Kelly. Thank you guys for taking the time today to be here with us. You're part of our family. Until next time, please stay safe.